okay, so you're just hit, getting hit with fine after <laughs> yeah. fine after mm-hmm. fine. Mm-hmm. And are you having big contracts during this time? Um, I'm having contracts. They're not huge, but I have very solid contracts at the time. It was just, it was a time, man, where I was, that was the time I was just going through a lot of shit with my ex. You know what I mean? So I was trying my hardest to be able to focus on the court and, and, and play, but little things would trigger me, and I had a very quick trigger. You know, at the same time, that's the end of that se- that, that season was, you know, I got into it with Doc Rivers. Um Going into the playoffs, I think, mm-hmm. we were watching film one time, and he didn't want to call out the players he needed to call out, so he called out me on some, two, like, bullshit things and was being hella disrespectful. And I just took offense to it, and, you know, I think the whole room had felt it at the time that it was just his day to pick on me, but it was just, it was my time where I was going through, you know, a, a nasty split up, and I just wasn't taking no shit from anyone, so I, fired, you know, barked back, and... um you know, I was ended up being the first trade after that season ended because so we ended up losing to Houston. I was the first trade like at 12:01 at the trade. The trade started. You could start trading at 12. I was traded by 12:01 because me and Doc got into it. Well, I guess you went through some depression after yeah. dealing with Doc Rivers. Yeah, I would. Def- I, I would just say overall it was tough. You know, because although I was the one that left my ex and, and filed for divorce and was ready to move on, just the whole overwhelming fact that like I don't have my family no more and I don't have my little guys no more that I woke up with every day and took to school and played with and you know were my life so you know splitting up with my ex I, I, it was definitely the right thing to do but just losing my boys in the process was tough you know what I mean so I was just going through a lot mentally and I was smoking a lot of weed you know to kind of keep me on edge lucky if it wasn't if I wasn't smoking who tell him you know what could have ended up happening because um, I really feel like although I had a few outbursts that if I didn't have the weed there would have been a lot more well, then you went to the Grizzlies. Mm-hmm. And that's when the whole Derek Fisher situation happened. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you and Derek Fisher had a relationship. Mm-hmm. You guys were friends. Yeah. Derek started dating Gloria mm-hmm. without you actually knowing. Mm-hmm. And I guess he actually started staying at your house mm-hmm. <laughs> with your sons yeah. in the house. Yeah. Then you found out one day. And you were roughly 95 miles away yeah. <laughs> when you found out. So this is <clears throat> so this was where I was in Memphis. I had left for Memphis a little bit early um, just to get acclimated to my new teammates. We, as the Memphis Grizzlies, came back to Cali to have training camp in Santa Barbara. So this, at this point, Gloria and I are split up, and it's a cool line of communication. You know what I mean? So we're cool. So I hit her up like, yo... I'm coming back for training camp. I haven't seen the boys for a minute. Can you bring the boys down Friday? Um, Saturday is my last day. And then i probably going to get Sunday off so I can just go back to L.A. You know what I mean? So I can just spend more time with the boys. And she was cool with it. So she brings them. She brings the boys down Friday. We hang out. Um, you know, get to see the boys. Saturday, the boys come from practice. My last day of practice. And I coach like, okay, we're off Sunday. Um, you know, be back in Memphis by practices like one o'clock, you know, so just be back in Memphis Monday morning. So um, I end up driving back to L.A. with Gloria and Derek. (laughs) I I ended up driving back to L.A. with Gloria and the boys, Right. you know, so I'm driving, uh, you know, her truck home. We're not really talking to him. Like I said, we're cool, but it's just not, you know, like we're, we're separated. We're not too, so we're, we're really not talking too much. Like she's on her phone and I'm just focusing, looking at my phone, talking to the boys a little bit. So we, we make a pit stop, maybe like 45 minutes into the drive from Santa Barbara back to LA. Me and the boys get one thing. She gets another thing. So me and the boys are in the Escalade <laughs> watching, they're watching their little cartoon way in the back. And we're waiting for Gloria to come back. And she starts walking out of the place she got her food, not realizing that her Bluetooth comes on in the car. It's just like a movie. So her, her Bluetooth, so her whole conversation stops the boys' movie. They don't really pick up on it, but I'm just like, yo, I fucking know this voice. And I hear, baby, I miss you, and I can't wait to see you again. And we had so much fun in New York. I'm like, what the fuck? That's Derek's voice. So that, that's the first time I'm like, what the fuck is going on? So she gets back, so she's maybe 10 feet from the car, and I, I guess I'm just ice grilling her, that she like freezes like a deer in the headlights. Like she knows by this time that her, her Bluetooth is on the car. So she gets back in the car. I'm like, who the fuck are you talking to? 
and she kind of freezes up. And obviously, I'm not going to get super loud because the boys are in the back. And I, I know it was Derek, and I said, and I was like, Derek, next time I see him, I'm going to beat the shit out of you. And it, and it hung up. And then the movie, and then the, <laughs> the boys' cartoon comes right back on. So needless to say, like, like I said, well, I wasn't really going to get into it with her, so it was dead silence like the next hour back home. She drops me off at my condo in Marina. I say bye to the boys. And then um, I'm just like, what the fuck is going on? So I'm thinking, I'm, I'm back in my place. I'm smoking, like, I'm going to whip this dude's ass. And it's not even so much, you know, just come to me. It's a hard situation, but come to me. But I end up finding more shit out. So then later that night, um, one of my twins hits me. And he's kind of shook, and he's like the rambunctious twin. Like, he's the one that's always bouncing off walls, and he kind of just, his vibe is off, and he's FaceTiming me. And I'm like, Carter, what's up, bro? He shakes his head, nothing. I'm just like, well, what's going on? Like, why are you not talking? He shakes his head, nothing. And then he puts his head down on the couch and puts a pillow over his face. And in the phone, he's like, your friend Derek is over here. And I'm like, no fucking way. <laughs> like, this is not real. I'm like, what? I was just like... I was like, where's your mom? And he's like, well, mommy, mommy, Isaiah, and, and, and Derek are uh, at the store or some shit like that. So when I hit my other twin, Isaiah, I'm like, hey, what's up, bro? I was like, what are you doing? He's like, oh, we just got done running errands. Um, we went to the store and to the airport. I'm like, oh, who did you pick up from the airport? And I think it was tough. So they're probably, what is this? They're probably six at this time. So it's almost like I'm asking him a question, but he doesn't want to tell on his mom. So I can tell him looking at his iPad, and he looks up at his mom like, can I answer this question? So I'm like, all right, let, let, let me talk. He's like, he's like uh, we went to pick up mommy's friend, Derek. And I'm like, oh, so Carter said this my friend, and then Isaiah said this mommy's friend. So I was like, let me talk to your mom. And um, she takes the iPad, and she's like, I can't talk right now. I'm getting ready to have some people. I was like, man, fuck that. You know, like, we need to talk. So she goes in the garage and she's like, well, I wanted to tell you, but today happened. I didn't know how to tell you. I was like, no, nah, fuck that. I was like, you got this dude around my kids and you didn't tell me. Mm -hmm. you know I mean, like you got this dude in my house and you didn't tell me like. Which you're paying for, by the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Which makes it a little, right, right. a little stingier. Right. So I'm just like, and then, then, then she cops like a little attitude where like, you, well, you can't tell me who I can be with and hangs up on me. I'm like, mm, okay. But so by this time, like both my cars are already out in uh, Memphis, and this is pre-Uber for me. So like I have a little, my, my homeboy stays with me, but he's always gone. Oh, his, his Bentley was downstairs, but I couldn't find the key. So I'm rummaging through the house. He's in Vegas, like, bro, where are your keys? I need your keys. I need, I need to go somewhere. And I kind of briefly tell him, I need to find your keys. So I finally found his keys. I go down the parking lot, put that bitch in reverse, and he has a flat tire. Mm. And it's a Bentley, so I can't just like rough the shit up. So I'm just like, fuck, what do I do? So I say, fuck it. So I just drive it. I put the hazards on and drive like three miles an hour, like four blocks to the gas station, put some air in the tire. I'm like, fuck it, I'm on. So I'm headed over there. So I think the whole situation was, I don't know where Kanye heard the story from, but everyone thought that once Kanye said 90 miles or 95 miles that I drove from Santa Barbara to Manhattan Beach when all I drove was from Marina Del Rey to Manhattan Beach. Okay, which is what, like 20 miles or something? It's 15 minutes. 15 minutes, right. Yeah. So well, I, it, I guess you were bumping Tupac the whole time. The whole time, man. So I'm bumping <laughs> Tupac. Probably hit, not the right, right type of music so at this I, point. So I, I hit up, uh, I hit up Gilbert Arenas. I'm just like, a, you know, kind of briefly give him what's going on. I was like, I'm probably going to need to get bailed out of jail tonight. He's like, what's going on? And I'm just like, you know, De Derek's you know, and I kind of give him a little story. He's like, you know, Gil Gilbert's a motherfucking fire starter himself. So oh, he's he the was, instigator. He was gassed anyway. He's like, I he's got you. He's the guy you. that brings the gun into right, the locker room. Right, He's like, I got you. Whatever you need, you're good. <laughs> so I end up getting to the house, and I give him my keys back by this time, so the front door's locked. And I hear people in the backyard, and I smell the fire pit. So I hop the fence. And it's crazy too. Like, I'm in a, in a hoodie and in my beanie, and I'm walking along the side of the fence. And then this is probably... 10 o'clock at night by now so you walk down the side of the house and then the backyard opens up a little bit and as soon as I turn into the backyard I see <laughs> Derek with his arm around Gloria so I just fire on him stuck him well I guess you jumped over the gate yeah I jumped over the back <laughs> fence because it was locked <laughs> right because Gilbert Arenas I guess did an Instagram post about it yeah <laughs> there was no play by play there was nobody stopped like there was no I was on another planet that night so you know, so I ended up walking in there and then the first people I see are Gloria and Derek. So I turn the corner, take off on him. Everybody starts screaming, and she had people over, a bunch of people over. 
So I hit him, he flies into, or falls into the sliding glass door. Okay, so you actually punch him in the face? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you connect? Mm -hmm. Okay. And hit him and knock him into the, to, to the sliding glass door. And then I'm jumped on by like three or four dudes. Everyone's screaming. All the girls are telling me to stop, Matt, stop, Matt. And I get these motherfuckers off my toe. Whoever gets in my way is getting hands. So <laughs> I get into the house and we get around this little island and we're kind of playing Tom and Jerry, him, no, we need to talk, we need to do this. Like, no, we don't need to do this. Everybody's screaming like, fuck that. You had your chance to talk to me, bro. Like, you know, 